Hey, this is Marco Benevento. You're listening to Recess with Spinelli. Spinelli, Spinelli, Spinelli. <laughs> You are tuned in to Recess with Spinelli here on WSPN 91.1 FM, Skidmore College Radio, Hoxton FM, London, England, the New York State Music Blog. And today we are here with the experimental musician Marco Benevento from Saugerties, New York. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Now, I'm really glad to finally get the chance to meet you as well as see your show, as I feel like over the past few years, within the musical community, radio community, every time I turn, I've heard your name. It's kind of like the, you know, when the, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? It's like you keep hearing it, but you're never entirely sure where they are. So have you found music to consume your entire life, essentially? Has this become everything to you? Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah, we're on the road a lot, writing, writing music a lot, making records, um, playing with, with my band quite a bit with these guys, with Karina and Andy. And, um, you know, I'm recording with various folks. So I'll get... Uh, call to to be on people's records um and um and i'll play with all sorts of kinds of different projects but um but mainly um i'm touring around with this band under my own name and we have six records out we just well i guess we just released our seventh record as a live uh record Mm -hmm. and um but yeah i mean i'm doing what i love and you know kind of I guess I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> so, Besides actually getting paid to do what you love, what would you say are some of the few things uh, about being a musician, about being in the music industry, that make you want to keep doing this? That's a good question. Um, I guess I've always been drawn to music. I love it. Uh, I've, As a kid, I played piano a lot. I got into synthesizers. My parents got me you know, like a synthesizer when I was a kid, and I would put headphones on and play it a lot and then they got me a drum machine and you know it's something that i i love to do and uh and it's easy for me when i'm off tour it's easy for me to just go right into my studio and work again like so it's it's different like i it's it's hard to call it work i mean it's it's work driving around and playing shows and doing all all of all that stuff but um doing all the touring but i mean when i go home i go right to the piano again you know when i'm off you know, and or, or I'll go right into the studio and, and right on on the laptop and and uh, you know start messing around with Pro Tools and you know recording new song ideas. So I'm just I'm just I'm lucky to be able to do what I love. So there's never any sort of downtime. I'm always doing it. I, I love doing it. So if you ever reach the point where once you get off a tour and you just say, you know, I need to take a break for a while, that's you know things are changing in your yeah, right. mind. I think something's wrong, you know. I mean, I rarely go home and like put on a movie and like veg out. You know, it's always like if the you know when the wife and the kiddos go to bed, um, I'll go out to the studio and work from like you know 9 p.m. till midnight or, or one in the morning. It's just something that that I've had all my life, so I I want to do it, you know, and I like it. You know, my my parents, my dad likes to sing. And, um, you know, growing up, we used to, music was all around, you know, we, my parents loved music and, and my uncle and cousins and, you know, all my family members, you know, love music. And, and, and so it's, it's something that, that I just, I really love to do. I play the accordion as well. I play upright bass. I play some drums. And, um, so I'm just fortunate enough to to be able to do something that I love as a, as a job too. Do you think there's any sort of challenge balancing your family life with your musical life? It's been an ongoing thing. I mean, I'm, I've been married for almost ten years, and we have two kids. And when we first, you know, started going out, you know, a while back, um, I was oh, I was basically doing the same thing. You know, on the road, a hundred to one hundred fifty days of the year, mm-hmm. and it's it's always been you know a challenge but um you know everyone's sort of used to it because it's just been going on the the whole time my kids have been alive you know and around so um but yeah you know you just you just need to make sure you um go on little family trips or do something fun together and i love hanging out with with my kiddos and my wife so whenever i'm home we we do fun stuff together you know i've always wanted to have a family and a house and 
do that sort of thing and I'm, I'm basically living the dream that I've always wanted to you know living in a house in the country and I have a little side studio where I can go work literally right next to the house I don't have to drive anywhere or do anything so but you went to school in Massachusetts and now you're you're in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. uh, did you find that moving to a place with less people, less of a city sense, uh, kind of helped you focus on your craft? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I grew up in New Jersey and then went to college at Berkeley College of Music in um, Boston and really enjoyed that. And, uh, and after that, I lived in Brooklyn for about 10 years. You know, after a while living in the city, you know, having two kids sort of getting into the routine of being on the road and then off the road, I realized that I sort of didn't need to live in the city anymore and I could have some more space. So we moved out to, to uh, you know, the Catskills to, to Socrates. And, um, and yeah, there's tons more space. I don't feel like I'm like in the rat race, although I do love city living and I, I Brooklyn's awesome. I love living there. But um, with the priorities being, you know, the kids and then being touring, you know, having more space and living in the country just seemed like, you know, a more ideal setting. And, you know, of course, pulling up to your house with a van f full of gear and uh, not having to unload it, you know, in the middle of the night. Like in Brooklyn, you can't you can't leave your car parked overnight with all your gear in it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like pretty, pretty bad idea. So actually coming home after a tour... Um, and the country's great. You just sort of pull in your driveway and just go right in your house and go right to bed or whatever. But um, but yeah, it's it's been pretty inspiring to live up there. And there's a ton of great musicians that live up there. I don't know if you know that, but there's you know Amy Helm lives up there. You know Levon Helm has his barn there. And even though he's passed passed on, um, you know they still have a lot of shows at the barn. And um, there's also a ton of recording studios up there. Um, where I've, like I mentioned earlier, I get called and hired to, to play on people's records. So, so there's kind of like some work to be had in the country when I go home after being on tour. So that's pretty awesome. But yeah, it's been completely inspiring to live in the country to have some more space. Also, to be feel more connected to the to the to the land. You know, like we have a big garden. You know, we have animals. We have like uh, goats and peacocks and chickens and. Um, Wait, hold on, like you have a, a peacock and a chicken? Yeah, yeah, we have animals. We have uh, we have a bunch of chickens and two goats, two peacocks, two bunnies. Um, and, you know, our kids uh, love to, you know, go out there and play with them and stuff, and it's awesome. And that's inspiring to, to work in the studio all day. And then, you know, when you, you can feel your brain getting a little fried, you just go out, go for a walk with the goats or something. And it like sort of recharges you. So I don't think I've heard too many people with peacocks in particular. Yeah. Uh, how did you end up getting a hold of those birds? My friends uh, have them at their farm near where I live, and um, after having chickens for a while, I saw their farm, and they had peacocks roaming around their yard, and, and I just thought it was a really beautiful sort of sight, you know, and I asked them about it and they said, oh yeah, you can get them here and you can, you know, they're pretty easy to take care of. They're like chickens. Once they know where their home is, they'll hang out. So, so just cause my friends, um, have a farm that, uh, sort of inspired me to get them. And, uh, that's cool. They're, you know, they do their thing. They're really, really pretty. And <laughs> is there a specific type of animal in the future you would love to, to have yes. and, and to take care of? Yes. I would love to have some alpaca. <laughs> Um, or maybe like a mini donkey or something. I mean, it's like, it's sort of silly. I mean, the chickens give you eggs, you know, but you know, it's sort of silly to have animals that you just, you know, take care of. And like, you know, you're like paying kind of, you know, here and there some good chunks of change to take care of them. And you're like, what are these doing for me exactly? You know, <laughs> but, um, but they're just, they're, they're awesome. I mean, it's, people have dogs and cats and you know, that, that, that also takes a lot of work and it's just, it's just fun to have a fun little companion, you know, a little, little, uh, whatever, just some outside animals you can hang out with every once in a while. And they're like, you know, they live outside. They don't want to be inside. So they're 
relatively easy to take care of. You don't have to do that much. But, yeah. And it kind of does put you in a relaxing mood as well. I mean, especially if you have too much work to do, just go out, stare at a chicken for a while. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, and, um, you know, they... You know, when you come, when I walk outside, they, you know, they know I bring them food and water. So anytime I walk outside, they like, they all get excited. Like, all right, what are we going to get now? So it's like, it's kind of this cool, like, you know, little, some outside friends that live in these little houses that are, that like, they like you. They like hanging out with you and they wonder what you're bringing them and whatnot. But, you know, yeah, it's fun. It's cool. I mean, moving to the city or moving from the city to the country sort of inspires you. You're like, all right, yeah, now we live on the country. We, we got to get chickens. And then you're... And you get chickens, and you figure out how to take care of them, and then you and you're like, all right, what are we gonna get next? And you get some goats or whatever, and then you're like, what are we gonna get next? I don't know. It's like this sort of ongoing thing, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I like it. So, so do you find when you're on tour, do you make an effort to get out of the cities every now and then and try and see the surrounding areas? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> we'll play major cities, and then we'll. You know, through maybe midweek we'll wind up being in, uh, you know, like we go out west a lot and play, you know, from Seattle to L.A. We do a big west coast tour every year and um, we'll stop in like little towns in Oregon and, um, you know, play these little sort of, you know, Woodstock esque kind of towns you know smaller towns and um and it's fun it's really nice i love playing in the small towns like um cottage grove oregon is like a cool little spot to play sometimes the smaller towns like really know how to party and you know sometimes like a bigger show like an la show or a new york show you know there's a ton more people there but you know maybe the crowd's not as ravenous as like a, a when you go to a small little a little town that they're just so excited that you came by to play for them so mm -hmm. yeah it's fun it's, it's kind of that appreciation don't take things for granted it's like oh look we finally got someone to come into, into town that's true yeah we we used to play in iowa like at this oh man I'm spacing on the name of the town it's terrible we used to play in iowa in this small little town and like I think we got like standing ovations like after every song. You know, it wasn't like at the end of the gig. Like they literally stand, literally stand up after every song, just like so appreciative of you showing up. And showing up so. When you're writing music or when you're performing, do you focus more on uh, appeasing the fans, appeasing an audience, uh, engaging with them, or do you focus more on kind of staying true to yourself and just kind of appeasing yourself and in hopes that will carry over? I'd say B, generally. You know, I, you just sort of go with uh, with what I'm sort of inspired um, to do first. You know, I'll. I'll make something and not think about anybody except or anything except for just what makes sense in the moment, you know, and um, and sort of compose something, maybe come up with a demo of something, or maybe even just come up with a little germ of an, of an idea that I feel like could eventually go go somewhere, and then maybe after the fact I'll think, is this too slow? Like maybe it wouldn't work that well next to these other songs that we have, and I'll experiment with trying it faster or. If that doesn't work, I'll maybe try it slower. So yeah, I do. I do think about the live show a bunch when I'm composing, but not too much. I don't. It doesn't really um, get in the way or anything. I'm, it's more sort of searching for what's best for the song first. Well, what what about for live albums like Woodstock ses sessions, mm -hmm. uh, which will be out on February seventeenth, or by the time that this airs, mm -hmm. will be out and are ready for purchase. What about those things that gig essentially we did that gig in september at applehead studios in woodstock and um you know we played songs from you know uh, from all of our records from all basically from all six of our records so we played like music from our entire catalog we're just basically putting on a show the live session in woodstock we just played a bunch of stuff from our entire catalog and put it all together and, and made a live record. And, you know, quite honestly, you know, we've been playing a lot as this band. So we, we sort of know what some good openers are, what some good songs are to play in the middle, and then what, you know, three songs or you know, so we want to do at the end as like a, you know, grand finale kind of thing. So there's, there's a bit of a recipe that, that you sort of, you get after a while. Well, especially for a live record, which is very dependent on that atmosphere right. that you hear. Yeah, that's true. 
yeah, the audience was very engaging, and they were really into the show. They were dancing. You know, even though we were in a studio, and, and honestly, we played, we all played with headphones on, so it was jet. It was kind of a sterile environment, you know, instead of like, you know, like a live gig where you're, you know, you're all the sounds are coming out of the speakers and it's really loud in the room. I mean, in that studio setting, we were, it was sort of a, a, a controlled live setting. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. so there, there, it was a little strange, but it was, it was really cool because we knew that we were gonna get um, some really good sounds out of it, and we're, a ba- we're. A, pretty well-oiled machine i gotta say we've been touring a lot and playing a lot over the last three four years so so nobody was really nervous or anything we were we were just trying to put on a good show and not let the headphones in the studio sort of get in the way of our our live show mind frame kind of thing so after doing that do you have a, a preference for a quote sterile studio album versus uh, a live studio album I, I guess I like you know making studio records just because you really get into the the detail work and you really get into the sounds I, I do like engineering and producing and, and you know making all the sounds from scratch in my studio so I like that um, process you know the live thing is a, a whole nother you know beast it's a whole nother thing you know I, I, I like the studio work because you can you can get into all the different sounds and you can you can get into a whole nother kind of um, a whole other kind of mind frame and like you know really experiment with different little sections and different little sounds that pop up here and there the live thing you know yeah you know and making a studio record you can do tons of things you can have all sorts of sounds happening you know but live you only have your two hands your two feet and your band members so, so you're sort of limited you can't throw in all those sounds maybe you want to do unless you're like playing the tracks on a laptop or something like that the live thing is more sometimes you can get into some improvisation and play off each other you know but the studio thing is more of like a like i said like a detailed sort of work sort of environment so now that we have this album uh coming out are you going to have anything else uh, that you're working on currently yeah yeah we're going to play some new songs tonight we've been playing a lot of new tunes on the road and we'll probably have a record out in like a year um yeah, I think having that little studio right next to my house is really <laughs> beneficial. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Makes for a productive week, very, month. <laughs> very productive, yeah. yeah. And before we head off, is there anything else uh, that you would like to add? Any final thoughts? Any final promotions? Oh, man. Come out and see our band. <laughs> it's really... Uh, we're getting uh, we're getting the live show together, and it's it's grown a lot since, say, two years ago or even a year ago. Um, it's very dancey. It's even though it's piano, bass, and drums. There's um, I have a lot of drum machines, Casio drum machines that I'm triggering, and all sorts of sounds, Mellotron sounds, and uh, old synth sounds, and then I've been singing a lot lately too. And and the, you know the crowd's also been sort of singing along to some songs here and there. It's pretty energetic. And um, it's a it's a very upbeat sort of live show. So come see us play. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. You have been listening to Recess with Spinelli here on WSPN ninety one point one FM, Skidmore College Radio, Hoxton FM, London, England, and the New York State Music Blog. And we have been speaking with Marco Benevento. His new live studio album Woodstock Sessions is out and available now. Right. <laughs>